live at WCOM 103.5 FM in Carborough. Well, we are here tonight with harpist Leah Stringfellow. Welcome. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here tonight. We're so thrilled to have you here. And I do have to ask about your name. Do, is this, do you have, is I mean, do you come from a long occupation? line of <laughs> Stringfellows? <laughs> I do, actually. I think the first string fellow in the U.S. Uh, came from England in, like, the 1760s, and that was John wow. Stringfellow, and over the years, his brothers came, and I'm probably related to about 80% of the string fellows wow. in the U.S. Are they musicians? Probably some of, some of them. My cousins play in a band called Melodyme. <laughs> oh, cool. So what got you interested in the harp? It's such an unusual instrument. I was about four years old the first time I saw a harp. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. How did that happen? Well, my I mean, s- sister is a singer, um, and she was singing in the Seattle Girls Choir mm-hmm. at that time. She was must have been 10 years old. Um, she, she was playing in the Little Girls uh group and at their Christmas concert each Uh level in that um, organization performed and the oldest choir the oldest girls um, did Ceremony of Carols by Benjamin Mm. Britten I was a little kid in a big cathedral I was kind of squirrely probably wanted to go home and play with my Barbies or something (laughs) right Uh, but when they played this piece which was written for a treble choir with harp accompaniment I thought it was awesome. I loved the harp. I thought it was big and beautiful. I loved wow, the sound. Wow, that's so cool that you got that bug so early in your life, you know? Yeah. So when did you start music lessons? So I started playing the piano uh, in kindergarten when I was mm-hmm. five. Um, wow. And began the harp when I was 10 in the mm-hmm. fourth grade. Yes. It's definitely an instrument that you have to be prepared for. You can't just start on the harp. Yeah, it's big. I mean, it is big. So I started on actually a much smaller instrument. My harp here is a concert grand harp. It's Mm. about six feet tall and 86 pounds. Wow. And then my instrument I started on was 41 pounds. Wow. So about half the size. Yes. But that stands to reason, because you were little and you could maneuver that size better, Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was more affordable for a beginning right, musician. Right, right. Can you m- move this around by yourself? Yes, and I do regularly. <laughs> uh, I can lift it. It's 86 pounds. It is a little, it looks heavier than it is. Um, and I have a cart to wheel it around, so that makes it much easier. I was going to say they should put wheels on those things. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. So you started studying the harp when you were 10. And then where did you go from there? Um, I continued playing, played uh, in my local harp ensemble in the Seattle area, started. um, So you're from Seattle. Yes, I am. Um, And I started playing uh, gigs when I was 14. I think my first gig was winter of my eighth grade year. I was so thrilled. I made $60 playing for two hours. Wow. Where? That must have been <laughs> exciting. I, w- I was thrilled at the time. Yeah, it was at a church in oh. Gig Harbor, Washington. Wow. Um, and I kept doing that, doing more and more playing. Uh, and then I went to college uh, at Vassar College and earned a BA in music. Mm. Um, and then left New York and moved to North Carolina, where I thought about what I wanted to do. Why did you do that? I, I, I mean, I'm <laughs> Why just curious. North Carolina? Uh, really on a whim. I thought I'd be able to get a job in North Carolina. I finished in 2009 and was worried about earning a living. And I thought, mm-hmm. okay, Raleigh's a growing city. My mm-hmm. mom thought I might like it. And I came. Affordable compared to New York. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Wow. So you've been, what brought you to Carver then? Um, my first job in North Carolina was doing home um, health care, and both of my clients lived in this area, so I moved to be near them. Oh, oh 
Well, that's good. So that's yeah. your day job. It was. It was. It was for a year. And, yeah. okay. and now you have a day and job? And now or? I'm playing the harp full time. <gasps> oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. It's always wow. great to hear about a musician that can make a living yes. just, yeah. you know, with their music and not have to have a side job delivering pizzas or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because a lot of people, it, I used to work in the restaurant business and a lot of people that I worked with were musicians that were just yeah. waiting to get mm -hmm. out of there, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. All right, well, that's let's wonderful. hear your Yeah, we want to hear you work. play. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Um, I'd like to play for you a piece called Harmonious uh, Blacksmith. It's by Handel. There's a nice little story that goes along with this piece. Um, the melody is based uh, on a tune that was whistled by a blacksmith that Handel would walk by his shop on his way to work, on his way to church. He was a Kapellmeister at that time, and he kind of got this tune in his head and then used this melody to write a theme and variations. And while that's a very nice story, it's actually not true at all. And <laughs> this piece, <laughs> this piece um, got the nickname even after Handel's death. So I'm not sure where the inspiration was, but it is a, a very sweet tune.
beautiful. Thank you very much. Oh, it's gorgeous. So maybe you want to say your name and your website or, or how people can find you and then play one more. Sure. My name is Lee Stringfellow. I'm a harpist in Carborough. My website is www.leestringfellow.com. That's L-E-I-G-H stringfellow.com. Exactly. We want to make sure they can find yes. you. Exactly. Well, that sounded so wonderful. I did want to ask you one thing. Did playing the piano prior to doing the harp help you a lot? In, I mean, was it an easy transition from one instrument to the other? Actually, I remember having um, a tough time when I first started the harp, mastering the technique with a piano. You have, you know, a hammer that's striking the key, and with the harp, the shape of your hand is hugely important to um, the t production, the tone production on the instrument, and it's uh, a tough shape to hold and maintain and consider while you're also thinking of counting, thinking of notes, thinking of you know the dynamics, right. and all of that. But you learned how to read music and how to count and, I did. and all of that I with did. the piano. Uh -huh. So Exactly. That, yeah. That's great. Well, we want to hear another song. Yes. Great. Go. So I'm going to play um, Seguidilla by Carlos Alzado. This is a dance. was great short and sweet huh yeah it's a contemporary Lovely. song it uses a little more uh techniques on the harp oh. fantastic now so when you play where do you play um in terms of practicing i practice in my living room facing the woods and uh <laughs> professionally right now i'm doing a lot of weddings i'm playing at a lot of churches what um, a great thing that must be to have the beautiful heart playing as you're yes. walking down the aisle. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Makes a nice atmosphere. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. You sound great. Yes, and beautiful. Lee Stringfellow, check her out. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yes. And we're out. Put it all out where we can't go back, can't turn back now. All the cynics and your closing doors I believed you once, but not anymore To my losers, my dreamers, my in-betweens Now we will be legends over kings and queens Oh, oh.